Hello everybody and good morning. Welcome to the Top Producer Show. So our mission is to educate, equip, train, and train servant leaders. Goodness, can't talk this morning. Our vision is to create financially independent achievers and our purpose is to help people grow. And right now we're going over the book, Think and Grow Rich. So before we jump into the next chapter, we're going to go ahead and invite some people onto here. You'll just have to excuse us because this does take a moment. And we are already halfway through the week. And here we go. All right, guys. Dave Roder, what's happening? Hope all is well out in California. Um, so chapter 12 uh, of Think and Grow Rich, which is the book we're on. Jordan, hello. So we're on Think and Grow Rich. Um, yesterday we talked about sex transmutation. Um, and if we kind of go through these, desire is number one. Chance, how are you? Um, desire is number one thing. You have to know, you know, what you want. Faith, um, the ability to use faith and have faith, uh, is number two. Auto suggestion is number three. Specialized knowledge is number four. Organized planning is number five. Number six is imagination. Number seven is decision. Number eight is persistence. Uh, number nine, the power of the mastermind. And number ten, um, sex transmutation, uh, which leads us to chapter twelve. But actually, it's the 11th um, step towards riches, which is the subconscious mind, uh, the connecting link, uh, being able to use and understand uh, your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind, for those of you who don't know, is formed between years, basically zero and, you know, when you're between one and seven. Um, it's all the things that you're told growing up. Um, the biggest problem um, is... Between the ages of one and seven, uh, the average child hears no, no you can't, no you shouldn't, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 60,000 times, and they hear yes around 5,000 times. Um, so most people's subconscious mind is pre-programmed to no, you can't. Um, you're also programmed by your basic human instinct, which has nothing to do necessarily with any um, outside force, it's more an interior thing. Uh, the human body is built for survival. Um, this is why if you're, you know, put in a situation where it's extreme temperature cold, um, your body knows, you know, to move all the blood to your heart. Um, you might lose your fingers, you might lose your toes, um, but you're not going to lose, you know, your ability to live. So it, it, it's based in human survival. It's interesting to know these things when you start looking at why people do other things. Um, the connecting link, the 11th step towards rich, is every impulse of thought that reaches the subconscious mind through any of the five areas um, classified is classified and recorded from which thoughts may be recalled as letters and may be taken from a filing cabinet. So this builds upon your self-esteem. This builds upon your you know, your inner thoughts. This builds upon why you feel the way you do when you hear something or see something. Um, it receives and files the senses and impressions or thoughts regardless of their nature. So what does it say? Um, that right there says you have to protect the information that's coming in. If you don't protect the information that's coming in, you will be pre-programmed rather than be the programmer. Um, and most people are being pre-programmed with a ton of information that is not useful, not helpful, and is in no way helping you get rich. In fact, most of the information is teaching you how to 
you know, not make it. Teaching you how to be a consumer. I wrote that yesterday. I put that up. I said, you know, um, creators get paid and consumers pay. Right? Um, the creator of Netflix is getting paid and the consumers are paying. Um, so are you a creator or are you a consumer? Um, you want to be a little of both, right? Um, in the beginning, you really need to be 90% consumer, 10% creator. And what do I mean by that? Um, you're going to need to learn a skill set, you know, and I'm not saying just network marketing, direct sales, producing. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you need to learn a bunch of different things to be able to produce on a very high level. Um, but your creation time is small. If you look at the most successful people out there, um, you know, in the field of maybe personal development or achievement, like a John Maxwell, John Maxwell spent an enormous amount of time. I mean, most of his time actually still today is on what on growing on actually feeding, you know, the mind only about 10% is actually giving. That's when he gives the speeches. That's when he gives the trainings. That's when he gives the talks. Uh, that's when he writes, he writes every day. Um, but the writing part comes after the reading part, the questioning part, the thinking part, the filing part. And then finally he writes. Um, and you know, how do I know that? Because he told us <laughs> at, our, at, you know, one of his trainings. So, um, you may voluntarily plant in the subconscious mind any plan, thought, or purpose which you desire to translate into physical monetary equivalent. The subconscious mind acts first on dominating desires which have been mixed with emotional feelings such as faith. So that's why this is where, this is one of the sections where a lot of this stuff starts combining together um, to be able to produce. So he's saying you have to kind of be in emotional state. Um, Tony Robbins talks about this in a different way. He goes, you know, there's a state of empowerment and there's a state of dispowerment. Empowerment is basically knowing what you want and having a good feeling that you can get it and accomplish it. Knowing what you want and having a good feeling that you can go after it and accomplish it. Disempowerment is basically feeling you know, it's not going to work out, feeling sluggish, feeling slow. And then your action upon that is, well, I'm going to sit here and think about it. I'm going to dwell on it. Um, I'm going to get depressed about it. Um, you'll find most of the time, most people who dwell uh, and are, are discouraged are focusing backwards, meaning things that have happened in the past, things that cannot be changed. Um, and you'll find majority of the time, people that are in a good mood, that have faith, are looking at either the present and or the future. Uh, most of the time, the future. You know, here's what I'm gonna create, here's what I'm gonna do, here's what it's gonna look like, here's what I'm gonna have. Those are good things. So, you can do that through auto-suggestion. Reading your desires and dreams with emotion to yourself twice a day. So, they talked about that in the very beginning of desire, you know, write down exactly what you want, have the faith. Um, auto-suggestion is repeating it over and over again. Um, do not become discouraged if you cannot influence your subconscious mind um, on your first attempt. The subconscious mind only responds to re repeated instructions filled with emotion. Repeated instructions. So it's something that, which is funny because this is the, this is the, the framework. This is the framework of all dominant commercials. Exact framework. Reading from the desires of your emotion twice a day. Do you see commercials more than twice a day? Yeah, they come on multiple times a day, um, does it, is it mixed with emotion? Yeah, they always cut the commercial at a peak state in a television show to then flash hamburgers and insurance companies and rental companies and every other type of company in front of you what they want you to buy so that way you have a good feeling about that company so when it does pop up that you're either gonna need it or go get it, you're like, oh, this is the right one. And you have this amazing feeling. You don't even think it through. Like, hey, this is a really shitty deal. Like, you never even think that. Um, why? Because you've been programmed not to. Um, what the book Think and Grow Rich teaches is you can do that with anything. I mean, imagine being able to program yourself to make a million dollars or $10 million. Or be able to find, you know, a way to make, you know, a significant amount of money that you basically control your life and, you know, as Jim Rohn said, you could build a financial wall around yourself that nobody, nobody could break through. Um, 
and you know sometimes you have to move to be able to do that so um, reading your desires and dreams twice daily do not become discouraged if you cannot influence your subconscious mind on your first attempt the subconscious mind only responds to repeated instructions filled with emotions have it be patient but be persistent what does that mean it means you know do the deal even when it's not right in front of you um, it will come and this this is the truth to all big business all sales organizations if you're trying to build anything significant that's that's basically the two things be patient but be persistent what does that mean don't sit there and wait for shit to show up you know you have to go out and get it but the persistence part is is do the work regardless if you see everything happening if you know it's the right work and that's the biggest problem <clears throat> is do you know it's the right work do you know what the work is um one of my mentors david bird david robinson what's happening uh one of my mentors david bird um one of his key phrases that he starts with is you know you can have amazing success and achievement if you find the right things to do and do them consistently and persistently over a long enough period of time so of course i asked the question i said was well, that really the key is the key really to do you know to do the thing is it is it the persistency consistency part he laughed in his southern texas voice oh no jf <laughs> you know that's how he, he has this weird I, i'm not really good at his accent but um i can still hear it in my head because every time he talked to me um well no jf um he's like most people never even find the half a dozen things that they need to do and i thought that was really interesting he goes most people are searching their whole life and here's Here's why the second part of the persistency consistency is most people guess on what the first five or six things are, meaning those half a dozen things that you need to do over and over and over and over and over again to be successful. Most people are guessing what those half a dozen things are. They never figure out these are the, the, the pillars. These are the things that are never going to change when it comes to building a successful business, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to team building, when it comes to you know being successful at anything, they never figure out what those six things are. So here's what they do. They buy another book and another course and replace thing after thing after thing. And they keep switching them out and switching them out and switching them out and switching them out, which they're tricking themselves into thinking, what? That they're, that they're being successful. But the reality is, is every fucking time they switch, they're starting over again. They don't realize that. They don't think that, but that's actually what's happening. Um, and I watch people spin their wheels. You know, I've watched people spin their wheels for over a decade. Um, you know, and I've had the privilege of, you know, watching Facebook and watch people do this. And it's, it's the hamster wheel, you know, that, you know, the hamster wheel, if you ever watch, you know, a hamster, you know, gerbil, any rodent, they'll get in that wheel and they'll just run, 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 like they're going to get somewhere. Um, you know, meanwhile, the rest of us are like, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, why? Because they're going to switch to the next thing. Um, so only over a long period of time. What is a long period of time? Um, the second part is, is they said, if you can't get rich in two to five years in what you're doing, and rich meaning monetarily wealthy, um, I, I heard this from several people at a conference I was at. They're like, if you can't make a million dollars in what you're doing in two to five years, then you're in the wrong thing. Like, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to get rich, like it has to be a two to five year time frame. If you can't do it in two to five years, then it's really not a program that's going to get you where you want to go. Um, you're wasting time. Um, so it's better to go look at, you know, something else, um, or find something else. So have it patient, uh, be persistent. Um, repetition is the mother of all skills. So if you want to develop a skill set, you have to do it over and 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 over again. And here's something I've learned. People will only pay for expert or excellent services and products. People only want to pay for, because nobody wants like, hey, do you want to go to an average dinner? You know, hey, let's go see an average movie. You know, all I want is an average car. I want an average spouse. I want an average, you know, love life. Nobody looks for average. But what will people pay for? People will pay for excellence and people will pay for, you know, the, the top. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for top experiences. So how do you create that in your life is a good question. Uh, repetition is the mother of all skill. Repetition with emotion is the birth of belief. 
So when you're emotionally, when you're in the state where you know you can accomplish it, how do you get into that state? Some people do it through substances. Some people do it through um, exercise and working out and eating right. I mean, there's, there's all these different things you could do. Uh, we don't have time to go into all those today. Uh, your subconscious mind works on whatever you give it. Your subconscious mind works on whatever you give it. So if you feed it negative, it's like, cool, we'll work with negative. You know, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Because that's what you're telling yourself. Um, if given fear and doubt and setbacks, that's what it works on daily. You must feed what you want to grow and starve what you want to die. Starve what you want to die. So I removed all social media off my phone. Uh, with the exception of two things. Um, one is Facebook Messenger. And the second one is LinkedIn. <clears throat> I looked at the two platforms that would probably get me the furthest. Um, I still want to be able to stay in touch with people, but I don't want to be fed a bunch of bullshit information. Um, and I'm not interested in anybody else's fucking sale of their course or any other. I, I really don't give a shit about your opinion on, you know, whatever's going on. I don't fucking care. Um, I, I don't have time for it. Um, and it's not helping me get where I want to go. Now, I, I have, you know, somebody's like, oh, you removed Facebook, but you're on Facebook. Yeah, you dumbass. You can log on on your computer. You know, you can go online to see this stuff. You don't have to have the app. The other thing that I did is I actually removed all notifications. Dakota, what's up? Um, by removing all notifications, now I'm not getting those dings consistently feeding me, oh, go look at this. Oh, go look at this. Oh, go look at this. It's really interesting. You actually... Like emotionally, you kind of come back down. You know, people tell me all the time, oh my gosh, I'm so tired, I'm so worn out, I'm so this, I'm not. I'm like, yeah, you're on the fucking phone doing this and it's just dopamine, 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 dopamine. What ends up happening is, is you actually wear out your adrenal glands and then you get fat. Now the reason you get fat is because your cortisol builds through the roof and it's also cancer causing. Um, you can learn about that later. But um, I removed all that shit off my phone. And the last, probably, gosh, it's only been a couple days. Like, it's been so much easier to get everything done. If you wonder why, gosh, it's so hard to get shit done. Just look on your phone at the amount of time you spend. Because it actually has that feature now. It'll tell you exactly how much time, like how many hours or minutes are spent um, scrolling through, flipping through. Um, I looked, I was something like six and a half hours on Facebook. Um, was I actually getting anywhere? Was I actually learning anything? No, not at all. Um, so I also built a page. This is something cool. If you want to protect the information and filter it in and use your subconscious mind, I built a page of these are things I need to listen to or watch inside of 2021. So I have a page of some YouTube clips and things that I want to see every time I see something and I'm like, Ooh, I need to watch that. But I then categorize it. What is the order I need to watch this stuff in? So I have a couple, you know, um, one of the trainers that, I've, I've been learning from that had an organization of over a million people um, and has an organization, even though he's died, his organization has gone on without him, still produces money for his uh, family, uh, his spouse is still alive, um, and then his organization um, is still going and has multiple breakoffs. Like I, I kind of follow what he does um, because he's built one of the most successful businesses of all time. Um, the guy above him had an even larger organization. Um, and basically one third of everything that the company he's in did flowed through his organization and his position. Um, so the guy who had a million people on his team, that was one organization of that guy's team. Um, so you're talking about figuring it out, like that's a guy you want to learn from. Um, so I want to feed my subconscious mind the stuff that he learned to be able to build that organization so that way I can filter it back out. So your subconscious mind works on giving you whatever. Um, you must feed what you want to grow and starve what you want to die. Your subconscious mind responds best to feeling and emotion. It responds best. That's what your subconscious mind basically opens for. If you just tell yourself, gosh, I really need to make money, it doesn't, doesn't hit. I mean, you can say it every day and eventually it will get through. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. You can talk yourself into that. But if you really want a different result, if you really want, you have to A, put yourself in an emotional state. And then when you're in the emotional state, that's when you have to go after this. So I'll give you a hint. Getting yourself into an emotional state. Music. Mm -hmm. Fitness. Um, you can do it through movies. You can do it through, like, movies just take a little bit longer. But you can listen to something 
that's amazing. You can imagine being at a concert or imagine being at a festival or something like that, or imagine being outdoors climbing or imagine, I mean, there's your imagination, you know, that's one of the things here. You can imagine these different things and put yourself in that state of mind. The fastest way to put yourself in that state of mind is a physical um, change in body state. That's the fastest way to do it. Now, you can, you can become more confident by sitting up straight. You can become more confident by, you know, chest out, head back, shoulders back. That, that's a pose that they do, what, inside the military. You know, inside every military I know of, no military walks like this. Every military is head up, shoulders back, you know, stand up straight. That immediately changes your state. Now, there's other things, you know, Tony Robbins talks about a power uh, pose or a power action. You know, a lot of times it's a clap uh, or a strike of some kind. Um, I know that they use this in martial arts a lot. It basically automatically changes your state. Um, so these are different things you can do um, and you can do them instantly. I mean, you can do them sitting or you can do them standing. You will actually change your physical state more standing than you will sitting. Um, so these are different things that you can do instantly. It doesn't take, I, I mean, I love that Dave will run five miles, but I'll be real honest, the majority of people aren't gonna run five miles. Um, the majority of people aren't gonna run a fifth of a mile um, without collapsing, and then they have to build up to it. You know, some people have physical things wrong with them that they can't do that. But if you start right now, you can change your state by just standing up, um, by walking faster, by pacing, incantations, there's all these different things you can do. So, passion, not just facts. Passion, not just facts. So it's the motion. Uh, we have six or seven. Seven major positive emotions. Desire, faith, love, sex, enthusiasm, romance, and hope. Those are the positive ones. Desire, faith, love, sex, enthusiasm, romance, and hope. Uh, but we have others of these, you know, but we have others. But these are the most powerful. So there are other ones. But those are the most powerful ones in creating something. Next, you know, and you'll find that the people who are like, like, well, I found something I love. I found something I love. You know, it's the most exciting thing. You know, it's more exciting than anything else to me. Um, enthusiasm, romance, you know. Um, you, you, you have some people like, I love it. And you have some people who are like, oh my gosh, I, I whip myself into this, you know, emotional state where I'm just, you know, completely, what does Tony Robbins say? I'm totally juiced in it, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> Um, he throws himself in a blender. I'm not really sure. Um, but we have also have seven major negative emotions to avoid. Fear, jealousy, hatred, revenge, greed, superstition, and anger. So fear. Fear is faith used in the opposite direction. Faith is, I'm going to use my imagination to get what I want. Fear is, I'm going to use my imagination not to get what I want. All you're doing with fear is creating a picture. Watch this. Creating a picture of a future event. Faith is creating a picture of a future event. Fear is creating a picture of a future event that doesn't work out for you. Something bad happens. Faith is creating a future event where something good happens. It's the exact same part of the brain. It's the exact same wiring that produces both fear and faith. The problem is, is what's behind that is your subconscious mind that puts you in state, that gives you the feeling every time you go to look at that direction, your basic human instinct and your pre-programmed subconscious mind is what pulls you back. And if you don't have a chart, if you're not charting this and tracking it, you will always be pulled back to your, and we've seen people, I've, I got, I've met so many people who are so talented but they don't have the ability to track what they're doing, so therefore they always come back to what? They always come back to their exact same circle, you know, of comfort zone, is what I was trying to say, comfort zone. Um, positive and negative cannot occupy the mind at the same time. Um, one or the other must dominate. Uh, form the habit of being positive emotions as often as possible. If you must, if you must, if you see, most people are usually resort to prayer for everything else <laughs> that's failed. So what he's saying is, is what if you prayed on a regular basis for stuff that's good? Most people only pray when shit goes bad. You know, oh my gosh, I'm losing my house. Now I'm going to pray. 
uh, oh my gosh, you know, I lost my job, I lost, you know, my, my money, I lost my savings account, I lost this, I lost that, now I'm gonna pray. He's like, you kinda wanna do that stuff ahead of time, uh, which is why they say be thankful every day, not just on the bad days, because you can put yourself in that emotional state. You know, the, the emotional state of gratitude and I don't know where I learned that. The emotional state of gratitude is basically what equals peace. Because a lot of people are like, well, you know, you don't want to be running after things all the time and always be like, I need stuff, I need stuff, I need stuff. Correct. Gratitude creates, just like gratitude, philanthropy, create peace. Because when you're giving back and uh, emotionally and spiritually satisfied, you feel physically satisfied. That's how it works. Um... Most people don't get that because most people are inherently selfish and self-centered. Um, just look around. Actually, you can just you know scroll through Facebook and you'll see that. Um, form the habit of using positive emotions as often as possible. If you see most people, they usually resort to prayer after everything else failed. If you go to prayer with negative and negative emotions, you'll probably <laughs> produce more negative. You know that's what you're going to get because that's where you're at. Um, Without passion, prayers in the subconscious mind aren't able to tune in. That's why they say you have to go to prayer with the idea of gratitude and thanks, right? It's You actually are thanking them for the things you're asking to come true because you're like, look, you have the power to give it to me anyway. You, it's the faith that you already know. Well, you have the power to give it to me anyway. Most people go to prayer like this. Oh, God, I hope this doesn't happen again, right? And he's like already saying, this shit's going to happen to me again. That's not how it's supposed to work. Um, so these are kind of like stereo instructions. Um, they're, they're a little deep. They're a little detailed. You know, you kind of have to know some background stuff to be able to learn it. But that's what we got. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, that is the chapter, chapter 12. So we have desire, faith, auto-suggestion, specialized knowledge, organized planning, imagination, decision, persistence, the power of the mastermind, sex transmutation, and then the mastery, it should be called the mastery of the subconscious mind. The ability to implant thoughts and feelings into your subconscious mind that make you run kind of on autopilot for success. I mean, imagine putting yourself on autopilot for success. Uh, until I heard someone frame fear like that, this story we create always doesn't work out for me. I never associated myself. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes somebody kind of be like, no, this is the way it works. I mean, when I learned that it was the exact same mechanism that created fear and faith, I start I started evaluating everything differently. Every time I did and I would whip myself into a state of fear, I was like, well, I'm just imagining it not working out. So I, I asked people this, you know, sometimes in a thing. I said, this is why the most successful people said, can you imagine standing on stage speaking in front of X number of people telling your story that you made it? And most people can't imagine that. Why? Because fear won't allow them to create that situation. But when you spell it out like that, what are the lights going to look like? Well, you know, I can kind of imagine that. Can you imagine the stage and the lights? Or, you know, can you imagine coming on Facebook, you know, thanking people for, you know, the achievement? Hey, we were able to build this organization. We were able to build this team. We were able to get to this level. We were able to make this money. And, and Dave, that's it. And most people, you know, if you've ever had the privilege of hitting rock bottom, um, it's a whole lot easier to be just thankful for, hey, look, I got up, I'm breathing. And, you know, as Tony Robbins has mentioned many, many times, he goes, the fact that you're able to wake up, I mean, if you're seeing this probably somewhere in the world, if you are able to wake up, get online, and watch a show on Facebook you probably are more fortunate than 99.9% .9 of everyone that's ever lived on the planet. Think about that. Everyone that's lived, I mean, if you go back 100 years, if you go back 1,000 years, if you go back 5,000 years, I don't know how far we can go back, but if you go back to any of those points, are you better off than basically all those people? Do you have more opportunity than all those people? You know, if you go back more than 200 years, most people's entire life, if you go back more than 200 years, most people's entire life was one cage. Sorry, somebody was calling me and I couldn't help but read that. I'll call them back later. So you're going to be able to find those notes on the page and also go follow us on YouTube because each one of these videos is going to be uploaded to there. And if you'd like to go back and rewatch this, you are more than welcome to do so. So with that, that is what we have for you guys today and we will see you tomorrow.